Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shroud. Today we're going to talk about a new processor launch from Intel. Not a platform, I almost said platform. It's not a platform launch. It's a new processor launch from Intel. This is the long-awaited launch of the Ivy Bridge E processor. Uh, you can see one here. There's not much to show Intel when it comes to a new CPU launch. It is uh, in this motherboard here. This is the EVGA X79 Dark, which gives you the first clue about what has and what has not changed on Ivy Bridge E. It's still using the LGA 2011 socket, still uses X79 motherboards, although your motherboard does need to be updated with a newer firmware, BIOS, UEFI, whatever it is that you want to call it. Um, for those people who are into the high-end Intel platforms, 13, LGA 1366 before LGA 2011 with Sandy Bridge E, pretty much what we're looking at here is very, very similar. Uh, the specs on the new Ivy Bridge E platform are going to look uh, much like you saw before. Six cores, 12 threads. These are fully unlocked processors. They include the features like Turbo Boost, Hyper Threading. Uh, they are unlocked, as we mentioned. It mentions here that they, they do run on the same motherboards, but uh, we had issues already uh, with motherboards that had older BIOS, uh, older firmware, not really running the new Core i7-4960X out of the box. Uh, you get up to 15 megs of cache on these. It's still a quad-channel DDR3 memory controller, supports up to 1866 megahertz by default, but obviously you can overclock it higher. It does add AVX and AES acceleration here. It still has 40 lanes of PCI Express, which is one of the big features of Ivy Bridge E plus X79, and it does add SSE 4.1 and 4.2 instructions, which those were uh, around on the previous ones as well. Uh, the launch flagship processor is the Core i7-4960X. You can get a look at its die shot right here. You can see the six cores. You can see the memory controller. Uh, very pretty graph. Very, very, very pretty image, uh, but nothing too drastically different here. What is new with the Core i7-4960X, though, is uh, that it is running on a 22 nanometer process. This is Ivy Bridge architecture based. It is not a, uh, base, it's, it's the next iteration, but it's not Haswell. So you're still kind of one processor generation back. Uh, if we look at this table here, it kind of compares the performance specifications, the clock specifications, that kind of thing, of the new Ivy Bridge parts in relation to the Core i7-4770K, which is a quad-core Haswell processor. So you can see they're launching three new processors, the 4960X, the 4930K, and the 4820K. This is, again, very similar to how Sandy Bridge E launched. Clock speeds uh, will go up to 4 gigahertz on the top end part, in, with uh, Turbo Boost clock speeds at least. Six cores, 12 threads, 15 megs of cache. Again, all the specs that we just mentioned on the other page, 130 watt TDP. And of course, for that Extreme Edition part, you get that Extreme Edition price, $990, which is always hard to swallow, but uh, if you're buying triple titans or something like that, hey, what's $1,000 on a CPU? The more conservative of us will probably look at the 4930K, which is, uh, has a little bit lower base clock, a 100 megahertz lower top-end turbo clock, uh, but is $555, so a significant price reduction, $435, $45, $35 lower. Uh, and then if you want to go down into the quad-core version, you can get that for $310, which is actually a little bit less than the 4770K Haswell part, but again, the, the platform costs are a little bit uh, bigger there. So, uh, the X79 platform is not changing. The specifications of it remain the same. Uh, you will see some motherboard vendors releasing new SKUs or updated SKUs. The EVGA X79 Dark is an example of that. Uh, but if you look through ASUS MSI Gigabyte, they are all releasing updated UEFI implementations to support Ivy Bridge E. The complication will be if you don't have a Sandy Bridge E processor now, making sure that it has the right firmware on it before you actually, you know, buy it and put it all together, otherwise you might have some problems. Um, we're still looking at, this, this is really the platform for super high-end enthusiasts that really need a lot of PCI Express lanes. Remember that Haswell, Ivy Bridge, Sandy Bridge, all those platforms that are kind of mainstream, if you will, uh, only come with 16 lanes of PCI Express off of the CPU. This processor has 40 lanes of PCI Express, which enables it to support up to four uh, graphics cards, quad SLI, quad Crossfire, 
It has four channels of DDR3 memory, which obviously increases your memory bandwidth quite a bit there. It still has support for only six serial ATA ports. Um, it has the south bridge itself. The chipset itself has eight PCI Express 2.0 lanes. You can see here it's got USB 2.0 support only. So if you want three, USB 3.0, make sure your motherboard actually adds that controller on there. Gigabit Ethernet uh, and all the things that, that you would normally expect to see on this kind of platform. So X79 remains the same for the most part with the Ivy Bridge E release. Uh, overclocking is obviously another big push for Ivy Bridge E and Sandy Bridge E before it. All of these parts are unlocked cores. They go up to 63x uh, ratio in uh, 100 megahertz incre increments, obviously. So if you feel like you can push your processor to 6.3 gigahertz, you have that flexibility, I guess. Intel is also enabling real-time uh, overclocking, power limits, turbo voltage, all that kind of stuff through software. So you'll see it first in the Intel Extreme tuner utility, but other software vendors are obviously integrating this as well. Memory frequency is unlocked in 266 megahertz increments. Uh, you have base clock adjustments in one megahertz increments, and they also have those multipliers again, so you can jump to 1.25 or 1.67 B clock if you want to do that. Uh, and they also integrate uh, PCI Express and DMI downscaling to accommodate uh, the base clock upscaling, right? So it kind of keeps everything in check, which is, which is good to have. Uh, core power limit overrides, all that stuff that was with Sandy Bridge Eve remains here. Independent voltage controls for cores, memory system agent still continues here. If you buy one of these processors, it's not going to come with an integrated cooler in there. You're going to have to buy something separate. I think that's pretty much expected at this point. Uh, the Ivy Bridge E is the same socket, so all the same coolers. If you had a, a socket that works on Sandy Bridge E, it's going to work on Ivy Bridge E. Uh, Intel has their own that's powered by Ace Tech, but uh, there are lots of other vendors out there, Corsair, Antec, uh, tons of them now that sell these self-contained water coolers, as well as just high-end air coolers, too. Here's a little look at the Intel Extreme tuning utility. It's actually a pretty nice piece of software for overclockers. They integrate some uh, social features, so you can actually download and share and upload your your UEFI settings uh, and, and kind of get an idea of what other overclockers are doing. That's you know, it's kind of on the extreme side in terms of how much overclocking you really want to do with your platform. So some people like it, some people won't. Now, in terms of performance, here's what we have to look at. Uh, Ivy Bridge E is running essentially at the same clock speeds as the Core i7-3970X, which was the last refresh to Sandy Bridge E. It also had a 4 gigahertz top turbo clock, but I think it had a 100 megahertz lower base clock. So you can see here, uh, take for example our Cinebench render test multi-threaded results. The Ivy Bridge E, the 4960X, is obviously the highest end part there, the best results, a little bit ahead of Sandy Bridge E. And it's also leaving behind the Haswell Ivy Bridge, Sandy Bridge parts, and the AMD processors to boot. Now keep in mind that this is a 6-core, 12-thread part, as opposed to the quad-core, 8-thread part that is Haswell, Ivy Bridge, Sandy Bridge, etc. So there's a there's not a noted advantage there for multi-threaded applications. But if you look at the single-threaded results, they're really not that impressive, right? So single-threaded, if you compare just the top two scores, Ivy Bridge E versus Haswell, the Haswell has the advantage, and that uh, kind of found uh, that was kind of the result we found throughout all of our benchmarking is applications that were single threaded showed Haswell to have the IPC improvement. It also had uh, a clock advantage most of the time. Well, it's actually about the same, uh, but the IPC improvement is definitely on Haswell's side. When you get into multi threaded, like we showed here with the Cinebench, that is going to be uh, the big advantage for uh, these higher end platforms. Here's a handbrake benchmark again showing. The advantage that Ivy Bridge E, the new Core i7-4960X, has over previous parts. Um, and keep in mind there, that gap between Haswell and Ivy Bridge E, those top two scores, not, not that dramatic, right? It's definitely the faster, the new 4960X is definitely faster, but, but not by a huge amount. Um, now, what may be more impressive for Ivy Bridge E as opposed to Sandy Bridge E is power consumption. Keep in mind that Ivy Bridge E is now a 22 nanometer part where Sandy Bridge E was, th was the older version, was 32, right? So this is 22, the same process technology that Haswell is using um, and that uh, Ivy Bridge used before it. And even though it definitely uses much more power than Haswell, look at how much less power it uses than Sandy Bridge E. It's actually using, you know, 25 watts less power 
than uh, uh, Sandy Bridge E, which is a, a pretty sizable improvement considering you are getting a performance increase along the way. And here's a couple of other benchmarks to show you some of the performance benefits you can get out of a six core configuration compared to a quad core configuration. So all that being said, um, where do we stand on Ivy Bridge E? It's kind of a mixed result, right? So it's definitely the newest, fastest processor platform you can get um, in most instances, especially for multi-threaded applications and workloads, right? Ivy Bridge E is going is to definitely dominate in those. There's a lot of overclocking capability on it, on it actually, but ours, we were only able to overclock it to about 4.3 or 4.4 gigahertz. We saw some reports of other people getting 4.5, a couple even saying they were able to get 4.6. So our processor sample was actually on the lower end of that, uh, even though we worked with EVGA on the X79 DART to try to figure out if we could tweak it a little bit higher. Uh, voltages, we pushed it as high as 1.45 volts, and we weren't able to get any higher than the 4.3, 4.4 gigahertz that we reported there. So um, there's obviously going to be some variability with overclocking in general. Uh, but getting 4.3 gigahertz with all cores running is obviously a pretty big jump over getting 3.7 gigahertz with all cores running. So. Uh, definitely the fastest platform for multi-threaded workloads. Haswell is still going to have some advantages on single-threaded in terms of power consumption. You know, a lo little bit more flexibility on your motherboard choice. You'll be able to get lower price motherboards. The uh, X79 platforms tend to be a little bit more expensive than the Z87s or Z77s before it. Also, if you're going to buy one of these, the Extreme Edition at $990 is still hard to swallow. Anytime you have to spend $1,000 on a processor, it's tough to do. Uh, so I would recommend probably going down to that $550 part and ratcheting up the frequency a little bit. Do a little bit of overclocking. You can definitely match that. Um, Three-way and four-way graphics performance is also another main reason people buy into the X79 platform. You can get Haswell platforms that use a PLX bridge chip that will support three-way crossfire and three-way SLI configurations, but really... Um, X79 and Ivy Bridge E and Sandy Bridge E before, really built for that really uh, uh, out of the box, right? So we did have a couple of little graphs here that we wanted to show you. We were only able to test three-way Titans on the 3970X and the 4960X. Very similar performance as you can see here, uh, but maybe what is a little bit better, uh, it's, it's, it's very minor differences, but if you look here, this is actually our frame time. So what you would like to see in a multi-GPU configuration is, a, is less variability in your frame times. And the thinner the bar and the less spikes and kind of hitches you get, the better. And while it's, it's, kind, of, it's kind of minor, the, the Core i7-4960X does appear to have a little bit better uh, frame time variance. So a little bit less variance in that regard compared to the Core i7-3970X. And these were both tested on the same motherboard with the same drivers and, and obviously uh, all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's a little bit better in that regard. I would say the takeaway is if you have a Sandy Bridge E platform, there's really no need to upgrade to an Ivy Bridge E platform. If you have a Haswell platform, there's definitely no need to upgrade to it unless you really need those PCI Express slots. Uh, if it's been a while since you've upgraded, maybe you're one of those users on a Core i7-920. Uh, I think this is going to be your closest equivalent going forward. Uh, you know, spend the, the amount of money that you have budget for, and it's, it's, it's the fastest processor we have. It's the fastest processor available for desktop users, and uh, there's a lot more to talk about it, testing. We have a lot more benchmarks. We have a lot more discussion on power consumption, performance per dollar, performance per watt. If you go to PCPer.com and check out the full review, uh, I guess that's it for now, guys. I'm Ryan Shrout. Talk to you later.